welcome to the Pastor's Desk, a devotional series. I'm Pastor Brandon, and today's topic is prayer. I believe we undervalue prayer. For example, how many hours in the day do you spend in prayer? Right now, you're probably thinking, hours? What is he thinking? Don't you mean minutes? I believe we live in such a fast-paced society that we can't sit still for longer than five minutes at a time without getting fidgety or an antsy, <clears throat> without thinking, what else can I do now? But I believe we owe it to God and we owe it to ourselves to spend more time in prayer. Not just quick ones throughout the day, but long, intense prayer sessions, the fervent prayer. I think the optimal time frame for a long session would be an hour. And I will post a prayer wheel for you of how you can break that down to start. Or you can try and free flow it, which I believe is the best. But if you break it up into smaller sections, it may be easier to start. This process of spending a longer amount of time in our prayer life. If we can sit through a two-hour-plus movie, we can spend an hour of our time in prayer, helping to build our relationship with God. Communication is one of the most essential means of developing and maintaining a healthy relationship. But when it comes to God, I believe we neglect this part. There's always exceptions to the rule. There's always someone who is doing better than us. But for, the, but for now, I'm speaking to those of us who need to work on it more. I catch myself thinking, I do pray enough. And then I think back to our example, Jesus, who was perfect, mind you, who had the best relationship with our Father anybody could ever hope to attain. But yet he still understood the value of prayer and it's recorded that he spent at least an hour in prayer, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But we see our example, who is perfect, still spending vast amounts of his time in prayer. Why? Because he understood its value. He understood that when I spend this alone time with just me and God, it strengthens our bond. It strengthens our relationship. It strengthens the connection. It helps me hear clearer. You know, there's so many things in this world that is a distraction from the devil. It is meant to drown out God's voice. It is meant to distract us away from spending that time in prayer. There's so many things that we can do more of than spend time in prayer. We can watch movies more than we pray. We can have hobbies more than we pray. We can work more than we pray. We can sleep more than we pray. We can eat more than we pray. We can do all these things, but we neglect our prayer life. We neglect that relationship. So it has been my endeavor to try myself to spend more time in prayer because I see that Jesus saw it as important. So I need to see it as important as well. But let's go ahead and get into the scripture. Matthew 26, 36 through 46. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible that this cup pass from, from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again a second time he went away and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, unless I drink it, your will be done. 
And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. <clears throat> so, I see him spending so much time in prayer. And this is just one example. Of course, Jesus prayed often. He would draw himself away from things to go spend time alone in prayer with God. I believe this is essential. And... And just at least this one instance, we see that he prayed for an hour straight, okay? And then he came back and prayed some more. And then he came back and prayed some more, okay? Now, I understand this was, the, uh, this was leading up to the crucifixion, so he understood that this was about to be go time, okay? This is prophecy being fulfilled. I'm having to go through this hard thing. i got to spend a lot of time in prayer, okay? We need to do, follow the same example. We need to spend a lot of time in prayer. Not just a quick one or two minute prayer. Okay, Anybody can do that. And I'm not saying those aren't good because we can do that throughout the day. Those one two minute prayers throughout the day as situations arise are good. But we also need to have a longer prayer session set aside each day whether that's the morning, in the middle, or in the, after, I mean, in the evening, whatever time you want to choose. We need to have at least one good fellowship, relationship building hour with our Heavenly Father. And as you'll see in the prayer wheel that I'll post, possibly at the end of this video, there's certain amounts of time that you can spend for each thing. Like, you don't have to talk for the whole hour. Anybody would get exhausted and tired from that. No, but communication is set up from talking, listening, talking, listening, talking, listening. You can set up your prayer wheel however you want to, and there's going to be suggestions on it, but you don't have to talk the whole time, okay? You can listen. Matter of fact, you probably might need to listen more than you talk. And that's just uh, my own personal preference, I probably need to do that too. I probably need to sit there and just be quiet and listen for his voice. Talk a little bit and then listen for a while. You know, talk a little bit more, listen for a while. Try that out. But uh, I believe we should pray when we awake from our sleep. You know, get a little good prayer in right when we wake up. And then pray throughout the day, those little one, two minute prayers, five minute, however much you want to spend in those little prayers. And then pray uh, at least one of those long sessions. Now, your long session to start might be 20 minutes. But let that be a starting point. Let you, let you recognize, hey, I need to build on that. I need to get this up to an hour. You know, Some of you might even have to struggle with the 20 minutes. I've noticed people struggling with 10 minutes. Okay, we need to get that up and keep progressing. Okay, try to get it to an hour. That's your goal. You want to jump right into it, straight to an hour, go ahead. But and I, I believe we also need to end our day with a prayer as well. A little, you know, quick prayer right before you go to sleep. You know, whatever you want to say. But I made this video not to come down on anybody, but I made it so that it would spur us on to reaching new heights in Christ. Any of us can plateau in anything in our lives, and I think prayer is one of our easiest ways of plateauing. We get to a spot, and, oh, well, it's easier just to say a two-minute prayer and then I'm done. We need to look for opportunities to pray. If you're in the car by yourself and you've got to drive 20, 30 minutes down the road, turn off the radio, okay? Yeah, it's cool to listen to music, but, hey, I need to spend time talking to my father now. I need to spend this, I need to dedicate this time to this of building our relationship because I've been neglecting and it's been lacking. Okay, so turn the radio off and pray. You got to mow your yard 20, 30 minutes to an hour, however long it takes you to mow, depending upon how big your property is. Spend that time in prayer. You're in the shower. Spend that time in prayer. You know, get it in. 
or go outside at night and look at the stars. That's what I like to do. And spend at least 20, 30 minutes in prayer. You know, and if you want to break it up in sections, if you want to pray 20 in the morning, 20 in the middle, and 20 at night, I think God will be okay with that. But just get it in. Get in that prayer time. It's not something you can push off. Believe me, I believe your life will benefit greatly if you spend more time in prayer. But anyway, I pray you got something good out of this. Stay tuned to the next one, and see you later.